What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking some time and diving into my saddle hunting kit. Um, I want to do a full breakdown of the saddle, the sticks I'm using, the platform I'm using, even the pack. Um, I've received lots of questions about the different things that I use. So I'm going to do some pros and cons, just an overall general review, my opinion, um, and give you some of the specifics of each item. So if you like what you see, please take a minute, hit the subscribe button, like the video, drop a comment. I'm always appreciative of the support. Let's get into it. first thing I wanted to highlight for you was my saddle. I run the Latitude Method Classic Saddle. I looked on their website, they don't even sell it anymore, so that just shows you it's a few generations old. Um, but the technology is still pretty much the same. They run this two panel design. Um, some of the pros for this saddle for me, um, the two panel system eliminates pressure points or pinch points. I noticed with other saddles that I tried before buying this one, the longer you sit, the more it pinched on the back of your legs. So for me, for comfortability, if you are going to try to hunt for two, three, four, five, maybe even six hours, alleviating those pinch points was going to be something that was big for me, and this saddle did that. The, the mesh material was another pro for me. Hunting in the south, 90% of the season, it's hot or warm. And so having that breathability, I'm a hot natured guy, it was just a huge plus. It breathes well, it keeps it lightweight, keeps it, keeps it cool. So that was something that was another big pro for me. Um, one thing you'll notice, a lot of saddles have metal buckle belts. To me, that's just another thing in the woods to make noise. So on the Latitude saddles, they have this rope belt slides well, locks well, holds well. Um, I've hiked many miles in this and never had an issue with this belt loosening. That was something that I feared initially when buying the saddle, but the rope belt has worked really well, eliminates that noise for you. You've got removable leg straps that can be tightened to your legs, so that's a pro as well. If you do have issues with slippage or not fitting your waist well, you can cinch it down on your legs and keep it keep it nice and tight. You got your typical Amstel bridge. I think at the price point of about three hundred dollars, you're getting a really high quality saddle, but it is pretty basic. I know some of the newer saddles that are a little bit more expensive have a lot more bells and whistles, but at that price point, I think you're getting a really high quality saddle. The durability it's held up for me for multiple years. You can hardly tell it's been used. Um, and so I think it's a very, very good saddle and something that's worth checking out. So the next piece of equipment I wanted to highlight for you is my Kong Ascender. This is one of those things that you don't know you need until you try it. This has been a game changer for me personally. Just from its ease of use in the tree, when you want to ascend or change your tether, you simply pull. And when you need to release, you just pull the string and, you, and it pulls right out. I found with the, with the knot, originally I had lots of issues with trying to change my tether, trying to adjust myself in the stand, and so went the route of trying the Kong, made the investment, they run about $60, um, and it's been well worth the money for me. The only con is going to be that price point. I know some people, you've already spent all this money on a saddle, why do you want to spend 60 more dollars on a piece of metal? Um, if it's in your budget, I highly recommend trying it. It was a game changer for me. Next up, I wanted to highlight my Novix sticks. So what I have here is the mini double step climbing stick and the four pack. Um, I'll highlight a few of the features for you. These steps are nine inches across. You've got a 17 inch stick. They advertise that'll get you anywhere from 10 to 12 feet up into the tree. You know, with aiders or depending on your height, that can vary, but I've never had a need for more than four of these. Nine times out of 10, I'm using three. Um, as far as the bite goes, these things are second to none. I have never had one slip. They will cut into any tree. Um, if you set them the right way, I mean, you'll take the strap off and the stick will stay to the tree. So as far as bite goes, uh, 
I can't think of a better stick. Um, one of the big cons for me is the stackability. Um, it does come with a buckle strap to help kind of maintain the stackability. What they've got is a hole in the backside of each of these sticks. And right here, this screw will go into the back of the stick below it, as well as the brackets for the, the teeth fit into the front of the stick. So without stealth stripping, they do stay together much better, but I found to be, them to be very loud without stealth strips. So once I stealth stripped it, they don't sit together as well. I know that's me altering the product there, but I found with other sticks, if you stealth strip them, they still fit together fine. So for me, that is a big con, um, but they're made in the USA. They, they're a pretty fair price, four sticks for $270. Um, highly recommend checking them out. So no saddle kit is complete without the platform. For me, I run the Tethered Predator. This platform is about as lightweight and compact as it gets. Um, it, it's just the perfect platform for those long public land hunts where you're having to hike in. It's super, super lightweight at about three pounds. It gives you just enough base to make some of those shots to stand comfortably without having all the extra bulk. I used to run an XOP Edge. I mean, I shaved two pounds by switching to this. So the bite is incredible. It's very basic. You know, there's not tons of adjustments you can do to this platform like some others, but it bites well into the tree, it's stable, it's lightweight, and it's compact. And so for me, that, that's just like the perfect, perfect platform. But the major con from, you know, there is no adjustability and the cost, they're $180. It's just expensive to saddle hunt, that's the reality. But look for sales, bought this on sale myself, can't go wrong here. So to round it all out is my pack. I run the Tenzing TZ2220. This pack is incredible. I've run it for almost a decade probably, um, from gun hunting to bow hunting to public land treks. It's just the right amount of pack for what I do. Um, tons of space and pockets. You've got pockets up here where you can store snacks, extra ropes, flashlights, the essentials. You've got a big main pouch with a, a spot for hydration. So if you are on one of those longer hikes, you can put a hydration pack in here. Um, it can hold extra layers, extra releases. All of that can fit in this pack. Um, it's got a waist clip and your shoulders, so good weight distribution. In the bottom, it does have a rain cover and a spot to, this is where I clip my sticks, but you can also pull out, it has a cover that can hold your bow or rifle on your back. Um, one of the standout features for me is the durability. This thing has held up over the test of time, hunted in all different situations, hung from many different trees, and the only thing that's messed up is there's one tear in one of the water bottle holders. So. With that being said, I mean, that durability just speaks for itself, in my opinion. Um, the major downside is it can get a bit bulky when you do load it down, but that's with any pack. I think if you're, if you're just loading it up with hydration, extra layers, that's just going to be expected. So this pack comes in at right around $180, so not the most expensive pack out there, but does the job well, in my opinion. I would highly recommend looking into their packs.